I'm a 28-year-old woman, and not too long ago I received a phone call from my mother. It had been almost six years since we last spoke. She called to tell me that she needed my help because my sister and her husband were going through a very hard time to give you a bit more information. The man my sister is married to now was once going to marry me. My sister is 26 years old, and for this story I'll call her Emily. Emily became romantically involved with my fiancé Jake, who is 28 years old, on the very day we were supposed to celebrate our engagement. Jake and I met in college, and after nearly five years of being a couple, he asked me to marry him. He planned a surprise party for us on the night we got engaged. I remember feeling incredibly happy, like I was the luckiest person in the world. However, that feeling changed around 10 p.m., when I went outside to the backyard, hoping to get a better signal on my phone to call my sister. That's when I saw Emily and Jake together, kissing each other very intensely. At first, they didn't even notice me standing there, completely shocked seeing them. Like, that was unbelievable to me. We had been together for almost five years, and this was happening on our engagement night, when they finally saw me. They stopped kissing immediately, but it was already too late. I ran away, got into my car, and drove to the nearest hotel as quickly as I could. I was so shocked by what I had seen that I was having trouble breathing properly. I was trying to convince myself that it wasn't real while I was in the hotel, trying to come to terms with what happened. Emily sent me a text message. She said she was sorry but admitted she was in love with Jake. She also mentioned that this had been going on for a long time. That message broke my heart all over again. Shortly after Emily's message, Jake sent me a text. He said something similar, explaining that he proposed to me because he thought if he committed to me, he could stop thinking about Emily but that plan didn't work. Instead, his feelings for Emily grew stronger. He tried to explain that their actions weren't about hurting me. They believed they were meant to be together. I felt like I was just filling a space a step for Jake to get closer to Emily. I spent a few days in a hotel trying to get my thoughts and emotions in order. I was so upset and confused, almost convincing myself that everything that had happened was just a mean joke played by life itself. After about four days, I knew I had to go back home to gather my belongings and return to work, or I risked losing my job upon my return home. I was surprised to find that my family had been living with Jake, all of them waiting for me to come back. This might have been heartwarming under different circumstances, but not with the way things had turned out. Everyone had been trying to reach out to me, sending endless text messages that I never answered. So when I walked through the door, it was quite a scene. Everyone rushed to hug me and express how happy they were to see me. Emily, too, approached me with tears in her eyes and gave me a big hug. I was so overwhelmed by everything that I couldn't even respond. I just stood there quietly while everyone was fussing around me. After things settled down a bit, I gathered my courage and announced that I was only there to pick up my things and leave for good. Jake had been quiet up until then, but at my announcement, he spoke up to say he was moving out to live with Emily since everything was out in the open. Now my family seemed oddly happy, smiling widely despite the situation not being a happy one for me. Emily stood close to Jake, giving me a sad look, but still smiling. I couldn't understand their reactions and finally asked my family why they were smiling. I pointed out how Emily had ended my engagement and taken my boyfriend of nearly five years away from me. There was nothing funny or sweet about that. My mother then spoke, telling me that although we couldn't change what had happened in the past, we had to accept what comes next. She was suggesting that moving forward and embracing the future was the only way to deal with the situation. My family made it clear that they saw a future where Emily and Jake were together despite how their relationship started. They admitted that the way Emily and Jake got together was wrong because it involved cheating, and they were sorry for that. However, they believed that it was for the best and wanted me to accept this new reality. Emily apologized to me for taking Jake away, explaining she couldn't control her feelings for him. She wished she had been able to tell me in a different way rather than me finding. In a different way rather than me finding out by seeing them together. Emily and Jake told me they were deeply in love and wanted to be together for the rest of their lives. Then they kissed in front of me, which was too much for me to handle. My mother even cried, which made me very upset. I told them that their actions were wrong and not something to celebrate. To my surprise, my family didn't support my reaction. They thought I was acting selfishly and not being happy for Emily. 
They criticized me for making the situation all about me, which shocked me. I couldn't believe they were taking their side and accusing me of overreacting. I told everyone to leave my house immediately. I was bewildered by how my family was defending Emily and Jake blaming me for being upset. My dad told me to stop acting like a child saying these things happen and I should just accept it. He suggested I should be happy for Emily because she had found her soulmate instead of feeling jealous. Their whole attitude seemed crazy to me. I couldn't stand it anymore, so I decided to leave. I went to my room, packed some things, and left, without listening to anything more. They had to say as I was leaving. They called after me, asking me not to go, but I felt there was nothing left to discuss. It was clear they cared more about Emily's happiness than about me, or the difference between right and wrong. They were so focused on justifying Emily's actions that they ignored my feelings completely after everything that had happened. I stopped talking to my family despite their many attempts to reach out to me. I chose not to respond. I felt that I didn't have to talk to them after how they had behaved a little while after the incident. An invitation arrived for me to attend the wedding of Emily and Jake. I chose not to go to their wedding. Furthermore, the friends Jake and I once shared, as well as some of my family members who knew the full story of what had happened, also chose to stand by me. They declined the wedding invitation in support of me and stopped talking to my family because they didn't agree with how my family treated me. Following the engagement party incident, five years have passed since then. During this time, I have essentially removed my family from my life. They have occasionally tried to reconnect with me by sending birthday wishes or messages during the new year, but I have consistently ignored these attempts. I haven't gone as far as blocking them on social media but I did remove them from my list of friends and followers. My social media profile is set to public, allowing them to see my posts. I did this deliberately because I wanted them to see how well I was doing without their presence in my life. I hoped that by seeing my happiness and success, they might feel a sense of regret or jealousy. This might seem a bit spiteful on my part, but it felt like a small form of retribution for the pain they caused me. I hadn't paid much attention to what was happening in their lives until about four days ago. That's when I received an unexpected phone call from a number I didn't recognize when I answered. I was surprised to hear my mother's voice on the other end. I initially wanted to hang up the moment I realized it was her, but she sounded so anxious and desperate that I found myself pausing. She pleaded for just a few minutes of my time to talk. Despite everything, her distress touched a part of me, and I couldn't bring myself to deny her request outright so I agreed to listen to what she had to say, if only for a brief conversation during our call. My mother shared that Emily and Jake had to decided to start a business together a few years back. Unfortunately, their business venture was struggling significantly. They weren't making any profit, and as a result, their investors had decided to withdraw their support in a desperate attempt to keep their business afloat. Emily and Jake borrowed more money. However, this additional funding did not solve their problems. Now they found themselves deeply in debt, facing serious financial difficulties, and being pursued by the people they owed money to the situation had become quite dire for Emily and Jake. They were facing pressure from every direction, their employees, the investors who had backed their business, and the individuals they had borrowed money from my mother reached out to me because she was aware that I was living a comfortable, luxurious life and had the financial means to potentially help them. She was asking for a significant amount of help. Specifically, she needed me to loan them nearly $75,000 to help settle their debts. I was puzzled why Emily hadn't approached me directly if they were in such dire need. My mother explained that Emily and Jake were both aware of the tension and past issues between us. They had explicitly told her not to contact me for help, remembering the fallout from five years ago. Emily, in particular, did not want me to know about their situation and was reluctant to accept any help from me. However, my mother felt she had no other option. She didn't know anyone else who could provide the financial assistance they needed on such short notice. By this point, Emily and Jake were struggling significantly, even to the extent of having difficulty affording basic necessities like food. Both my parents and Jake's family were doing their best to support them, but their resources were limited, given that most of our family members, including Jake's parents, were retired. They couldn't afford to deplete their savings entirely to bail out Emily and Jake. Their financial support could only go so far without jeopardizing their own financial security, faced with no other alternatives. My mother reached out to me, hoping I could be the solution to their financial crisis. However, the thought of helping them didn't sit well with me 
after everything that had happened. After the betrayal and the way they had treated me, I felt no obligation to extend any help. Emily's decision to avoid asking me directly for help was the right one. As far as I was concerned, they had lost any right to ask anything of me. The moment they chose to betray me when I told my mother that I wouldn't be able to help them, she reacted with disappointment, calling me cruel, and urging me to reconsider for the sake of family unity. I reminded her of the lack of consideration Emily Jake and the rest of my family had shown me during their affair, and in the aftermath my family had chosen to support Emily and Jake without a second thought for my feelings. Therefore I felt no obligation to think of them now in their time of need. Achieving the success I have today wasn't easy. It took a lot of hard work and dedication. So the idea of giving away $75,000 to two people who betrayed me didn't seem right when I expressed my refusal. My mother became very emotional over the phone. She cried telling me she never imagined I would become someone she viewed as selfish. She warned me that my sister and her husband were facing serious trouble and that if I didn't help the consequences would be severe. Despite her emotional plea, I remained firm in my decision and ended the call. Following that conversation, my mother began sending me messages almost every hour, trying to persuade me to change my mind. She insisted that seeking revenge at this time was petty, and that the situation Emily was in demanded immediate help. She feared that if I didn't assist, I would come to regret it later. I found myself at a loss for words, not wanting to be seen as the villain in this scenario, wondering if I was in the wrong for refusing to offer financial aid to my sister after she had a role in such a significant betrayal. I sought opinions from others. Eventually, I made the decision to block my family on all forms of communication. I hadn't done so before, for two main reasons. First, I wanted them to see my life successes and feel a sense of envy. And second, I worried that cutting ties completely might be something I'd regret if anything bad happened to them. However, I've reached a point where those concerns no longer hold weight for me. Reflecting on it, I realize, I should have removed them from my life much sooner. The reluctance to help my sister now doesn't stem from pettiness. It feels like the most logical step they've already squandered a significant amount of money, and I doubt that lending them more would solve their problems. It's unlikely they'd be able to repay a sum as large as $75,000 while I'm financially stable. That doesn't mean I can afford to give away such a large amount without expecting it back. Even if the situation involved a close friend, I would still expect repayment given that Emily and Jake are neither close to me nor in a position to repay my decision to not provide financial assistance. Feels justified? I saw no good reason to offer them help. It was pretty straightforward. I talked to a few of my friends to see what they thought about the situation, and they all agreed with me. They said I was right, not to lend the money. Not because I wanted revenge, but because it didn't make sense to help people who had hurt me before. After that, I blocked my mother on my phone in social media so she couldn't send me guilt-written messages anymore. With her blocked, I felt relieved and free from any further pressure. Then something unexpected happened while I was at work. My neighbor called me. She said there was a couple outside my house yelling for me, refusing to go away. They had been there for about an hour, causing a commotion. I had a strong feeling I knew who it was, even before my neighbor described them to me. Sure enough, her description confirmed my suspicions that it was Emily and Jake causing the trouble. My neighbor was concerned and said I needed to come home to handle the situation because she didn't trust their intentions given Emily and Jake's history. I couldn't disagree. I thanked her for letting me know and rushed home, worried about what they might do. I made it back home in about 15 minutes and found them trying to pick the lock on my front door. I confronted them asking what they thought they were doing. In an attempt to call the police, I pulled out my phone, but Jake quickly knocked it from my hand. Emily approached me saying they just wanted to talk and didn't want anything for me. At that moment, I was cautious and told them if they had something to say, it would have to be outside because I wasn't going to let them into my house, whatever they needed to say. They would have to say it right there in my yard. They seemed okay with staying outside, which was a big relief for me. Inside my head I was thinking that it would definitely not be a good idea to let Emily and Jake into my house. They were already showing signs of being pretty upset and aggressive, 
and since they mentioned they didn't want anything from me, I was confused, but cautious about what they might say or do next. Emily began the conversation. She explained that my mom had filled her in on our phone call, including how I hadn't responded to any messages afterward, and had gone as far as to block them on my phone and social media. Emily thought my behavior was really unfair. She pointed out that it had been five years since the incident that caused all the trouble between us. According to her, I should have been able to get past what happened by now. Instead, she accused me of just trying to make a scene and attract attention from our family by acting in a way that she considered childish and overly dramatic. She felt very insulted because I had refused to help them out financially when they were in a tough spot. The reason she came to talk to me was about the financial help they needed. Emily told me that she had managed to scrape together some money for the time being by selling their house and all their jewelry. But she was worried about what would happen in the future, since she couldn't sell their house and jewelry again. She wanted to know if she could rely on me to help them out. If they needed financial assistance later on, I was very clear in my response. I told her she should not expect any help from me. No matter what the situation was, I was really upset by their nerve to even ask for such a thing, and I even told her that it was taking a lot of effort for me not to lose my temper. Right then and there, I suggested that it would be best for them if they just left. But then Jake said something that really shocked me. He insisted that they wouldn't leave until I signed some sort of document promising that I would give them money in the future whenever they needed it. This idea seemed completely ridiculous to me. Even if I were somehow forced into signing such a document, I knew that it couldn't be legally binding. I'm pretty sure the law doesn't allow for contracts to be enforced if one party is pressured or forced into signing. And the idea that they thought they could manipulate me into agreeing to such a thing was ludicrous. After Emily and Jake tried to confront me at my house, I told them very clearly that they needed to leave. Emily didn't take this well and actually pushed me, trying to argue that because we're family, I somehow owed it to them to provide help. This moment was really shocking to me. I felt so angry and upset that she would physically push me, and for a brief second, I thought about reacting physically in return. However, I knew deep down that responding with violence wasn't the right answer, it would only escalate the situation and make things much worse. So I quickly decided on a different course of action. I remembered that my phone had fallen to the ground earlier when Jake knocked it out of my hand. I picked it up and made a swift decision to get away from them as quickly as possible. I ran to my car, which fortunately I had left running when I initially got out to confront them. This allowed me to get into the car and drive away quickly without having to waste any time starting the engine or checking to see if they were following me. I didn't even glance in my rearview mirror, because my main focus was putting as much distance between us as possible. Once I felt I was far enough away and safe, I called the police to report what had happened. I explained the entire situation from the unexpected confrontation to their refusal to leave my property after making the call. I drove back towards my house, timing my return, so that I arrived just as the police did. About 20 minutes later, I told the police officers everything providing a full account of the events they listened, and then took action by arresting Emily and Jake, while I was aware that the legal consequences they faced might not be very severe. The fact that the police took them away gave me some peace of mind. It meant I didn't have to deal directly with them anymore, at least for the time being in the hours that followed their arrest. I was surprised by the silence from my family. I'd expected someone to reach out perhaps to argue on Emily and Jake's behalf or to criticize my actions, but there was nothing, no phone calls, no messages from other family members. This silence made me wonder, perhaps my family had finally decided to respect my boundaries and leave me alone, or alternatively, they might be waiting for the right time to contact me, possibly hoping that emotions would cool down and they could approach me in a different way later on a week went by since that intense day. And during that time, I began to think that maybe just, maybe my family had decided not to bother me any further. Calling the police on Emily and Jake might have sent a clear message that I was serious about enforcing my boundaries. However, I soon realized that my hope for a peaceful resolution might have been premature. After everything that had happened, I thought I had finally put some distance between myself and my family's attempts to reach out. But life had another twist waiting for me. This time it wasn't Emily or Jake trying to get in touch. It was my parents. 
They came to my house yesterday, wanting to have a conversation with me. Seeing them at my doorstep was unexpected. They didn't have the same demanding presence as Emily and Jake did. Instead, they appeared more humble and remorseful, which made me decide to let them inside. As soon as we were inside, my mother couldn't hold back her tears. She immediately began to apologize for taking Emily's side instead of mine. Right from the moment she stepped into the house, it was clear that my mother was deeply regretful of her past actions, and her apology seemed sincere. My father standing by her side shared his perspective as well. He explained that after they found out about Emily and Jake's arrest, and the fact that they had physically pushed me, they started to see things differently. This incident made them realize how wrongly they had acted, leading them to decide to cut off ties with Emily and Jake. Throughout their visit, my mother continued to cry, showing how sorry she was. My father took the time to express their apologies for not supporting me from the beginning. They admitted that they had made a mistake by siding with Emily acknowledging that I was the one who had been wronged all along. I listened to them and told them that I appreciated their apologies and their willingness to see their mistakes. However, I also made it clear that for me, it felt like too much time had passed for us to just go back to how things were. I become accustomed to living my life according to my own rules, making decisions for myself without their influence. While I was thankful for their visit and their attempt to apologize, I couldn't see myself putting in the effort to repair our relationship. The past actions and decisions had caused too much damage, and trying to mend our relationship now seemed pointless. Even though they were my parents, they seemed hopeful at first, believing that we could fix our relationship, if we all really wanted to but that was the crux of the issue. I no longer had the desire to make amends. I had found a sense of peace in living independently away from the family drama. I respected their attempt to make things right, but I had to be honest with them. And myself, I was done trying to salvage what had been broken. They looked a bit disappointed by my response, but they eventually accepted my decision. Before leaving, they asked if I would consider unblocking them, just so we could keep some lines of communication open. After some thought, I agreed to unblock them. It was a strange decision to make considering everything. But I felt it was an okay compromise, so I unblocked my parents, marking a peculiar chapter in our ongoing family saga. It felt odd, but perhaps it was a small step toward something. Even if it wasn't a full reconciliation, 